I was repairing a Macintosh SE30 board whenever I noticed that the Macintosh Quadra 605 or LC475 board is the same width. Also, the Quadra board is a bit shorter than the SE30 board, so I decided to install the Quadra in a SE30 chassis. To get proper clearance, I had to remove some metal from the rear, and then on the back, remove the high points. Also on the rear, I had to cut a slot for the Ethernet card for the RAM and for the VRAM. Now the logic board can be installed by just routing the SCSI and VGA cables through in advance. Here you can see where I cut off the DA15 connector and soldered on a VGA cable that I made. To avoid intermittent uh, video problems, you need to have a good battery installed. Very important. And also I installed a 128 megabyte RAM SIM and maxed out the video RAM. I've replaced all the SMD capacitors with ceramics and tantalums. Now when you install the ferrite bead, you need to uh, experiment. The best place i found is right around between the fan and the power supply. That way you don't get uh, static on the LCD screen. Now here is my first version of the power cable. I kept this end. Uh, it plugs directly into the SE30 analog board. And I modified this end later on. Now here's the new power supply that I transplanted into the old SE30 power supply housing. It has its own cooling fan. And then we have the driver board for the LCD. And we have a new cooling fan. It moves 3 CFM more than the old fan on the Quadra or the SE30. Here you can see where I left the uh, circuitry intact for the negative 5 volt supply to the uh, Quadra board. Let's take a look at the back of it. And you may be asking, well, why did you paint it? And my answer is, I don't know. Now, a lot of people have reviewed the SCSI to SD, so I'm not going to do that. I'm just showing you how I did the installation. And it came out really well. I rebuilt the floppy drive, and I installed a blue activity light. Now, here's an earlier version of the uh, interface for the LCD to the uh, faceplate or front bezel. Uh, it's made out of 1 8 inch acrylic, and it's painted with Kryolan Fusion paint. That stuff is the best. Uh, what you do is you go ahead and you mask off the area for uh, the viewable area, area of the LCD, and then you go ahead and you paint it. Well, first you're going to glue all the uh, side skirts that interface with the uh, bezel. Now, very durable. This one is cracked. But that's because I uh, stepped on it as I was running backwards. There was a snake in my shop. And yeah, there was a snake. And I do not like spiders and snakes. I ain't got what it takes to love them. Now for the Krylon, whenever you put a coat down, you should allow a week for it to fully dry. Now here's the face plate we're going to be using in this build. I've already installed the LCD to the acrylic plate. And here you can see how the LCD is installed and the acrylic plate is attached to the case. It uses the same mounting points as the uh, old CRT. It's a Mitsubishi uh, monitor. As I say, there's the mounting for the face plate, the acrylic. All right, let's get it together. Here you can see the modification I made to the uh, power connector. So you slide the board in and you plug it into the power cable once it's inserted forward. Now I route the power cable down through a slot that is right here next to the floppy drive. That eliminated running the power cable over the top of the board and across over to the uh, analog board. For the floppy cable, I took it and I routed it through the PDS slot. And you have access forward and it's pretty easy to get on and off, and here is the modified power cable. Okay, this is it. I've finally installed everything into the chassis. Now, I've tested everything together separately before. This is the first time I've started the machine, uh, well, with everything installed. Okay, new cooling fan, and floppy drive and SCSI to SD, LCD, brand new power supply. Yeah, all right. Not bad, not bad. Let's go ahead and do it. Houston, we have a go. Plug the cable in. Let's turn her around. Five, four, three, two, one. Hot boot tone. All right. Now we're going to have to wait two minutes while the uh, ROM does an extended check on the 128 megabyte SIM. Blue activity light, splash screen, 
All right. Yeah. Monitor resolution change. There we go. It's loading the extensions. Let's go ahead and get a close up on that. Oh, yeah. <laughs> All right. Now, let me explain the uh, resolution change. What it is is the uh, default resolution for the monitor is 640 by 480. And whenever I installed uh, 8.1, I went to the monitor's control panel and I switched it to 800 by 600. All right. Booting to the desktop. Uh, come on, come on, come on. Ah, yeah. Four SCSI drives on the desktop. Toast and iCab and Stuff at Expander Deluxe 5.5. 132 megabytes of RAM, four on the logic board, and 128 megabytes SIM. Now, yeah, let's go to the profiler. All right, there we have it. Macintosh LC475 board, Quasia 605, same thing. I wish I could take a temp on it. Let's get out of this and let's go ahead and shut it down. Now you shut it down just like you do the uh, regular SE30. The uh, Quadro 605 doesn't have soft power. All right, let's get the rear case on. Okay, let's do a quick comparison. Here is a stock Macintosh SE30 case, and here is the Macintosh Quadra 605 case. Uh, now, what I did was I spliced in the back plate from the 605 bottom case, and uh, ah, it came out really good. Look at that. Some rough spots, a little bit, but I got the idea from my Mystic Color Classic upgrade, and it came out really well, but I got to tell you, man, you know what? Take a look at this down here. This is really something. Oh, yeah, I like that. I might clean it up. I don't know. I should leave well enough alone. Let's get a close-up. And, yep. I like it. I like it a lot. All right. Let's go see the inside where I did the plastic weld. And then, uh, of course, I reinforced the outside with a uh, acetone slurry mix. And it came out really well. Came out real good. I like it. I like it. Uh, I don't know what I'm going to do with the rear PDS port. I might run the uh, extra 5 volt that I have inside the cases um, through there. I don't know. I don't know. We'll see. Anyway, let's uh, put it together. Okay, here she is all together with the back case on. I've uh, put the emblem back on. And here you can see the cutout for the IR sensor for the LCD remote to control contrast and brightness. Ah, look at that color. Absolutely beautiful. Ah, look at that back plate. Yeah. Side shot. Now, whenever I turned on the uh, LCD, uh, acrylic is a nightmare for static electricity, so it uh, attracted dust to the uh, housing on the inside. Uh, I'm not going to tear it apart to remove the specs because you can't really see them when it's on the desktop at all. And then, I'll go ahead and speed things up until I get to the part with the uh, remote. And here it is. Uh, just go ahead and hit menu. And, well, you can control everything. Brightness, contrast, blah, blah, blah. All right. I'll go ahead and speed up the rest of the video by 12. Uh, here's a couple of games. Chuck Yeager. Older games like this, you're going to have to reset the resolution on the monitor to uh, 256 colors. Here's the resolution control panel. Tetris. Uh, some of these old games, they have a problem with uh, sound. Uh, Tetris doesn't have any sound. However, uh, Chuck Yeager, Air Combat, and Prince of Persia, they have no problems. They play as they should. So, that was it. Let's shut it down. And good night. Huh. Okay, that's it. I tried to keep it short, um, under 10 minutes, because if you're like me, I really don't like to invest my time in videos over 10, 15 minutes long, and plus it's something neat like uh, Michio Kaku or Neil deGrasse Tyson or uh, Wally Coyote. But while the video may have been around 10 minutes, I have over 20 man hours invested into this project, and I have no regrets about it. I think it came out really well. Um, 
And it wasn't supposed to be an educational or an instructional video because do we really need another video on YouTube on how to solder? Yeah. <laughs> so, um, that being said, yeah, I really enjoyed making it. Uh, you know, I had a couple of uh, extra uh, SE30 cases lying around. I had a couple of uh, extra Quadra 605 LC475 boards. Same board. The only difference is a jumper. And um, I like it. Now I've got a compact Mac to, with a uh, color LCD, multiple resolutions, a 68040, well, 68LC040 processor, which is still quite a bit more powerful than the uh, original 68030 processor that came in the Macintosh SE30. Um, I don't have to do any hacks to get it to run uh, 8.1. I don't have to put any third-party ROMs in to make it 32-bit clean. It can get up to 132 megabytes of uh, RAM with no problem. Has Ethernet. Uh, yeah, I like the way it came out. Oh, and the biggest one. I didn't have to spend a couple hundred bucks on a card from eBay that was tested 10 years ago when it was put into the anti-stat plastic. Yeah, I ain't doing that crap anymore. So, uh, yeah. Yeah, I really like the way it came out. Uh, you know, if um, you're a kid and you decide to do something like this, please make sure you adhere to strenuous uh, safety precautions whenever you're doing it. There are things in here that can kill you. Now, I consider a kid to be anyone between, uh, I don't know, a toddler up to what I've seen in the last couple of years, 30 years of age. So please be careful and make sure you know what you're doing learn how to properly discharge a CRT. Um, if you're an adult and you don't follow proper uh, safety or disassembly procedures, well, all I can say is in the great scheme of things, um, you probably weren't meant to be around that much longer and you should feel blessed that you have survived this long in life. Well, I reckon that's it. That's all I have to say. And, um, I'm Billy. I'm glad you tuned in. Please be kind in the comments. This is my first video. And one more thing. Um, you know, it's a scientific fact. Kids love to fish. Uh, so do yourself a favor. Make a kid's day and take them fishing. I'm Billy. Uh, hope you've enjoyed the video. And uh, I'll see you later.